Hey there, a huge thank you to all the names on screen right now. The renegades who clicked the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Hugely appreciate that, my friends. Enjoy the show. And uh, welcome back tonight to I'm Suffer of Let's Suffer Together back in the cauldron, my friends. And just in case you didn't see the last video, I highly recommend you go watch it to give you some context to this video. The cauldron key. Is this the first cauldron clue in the Void Connection? Now, this is a somewhat unofficial part to an explanation as to what I found out literally the day afterwards. And again, thank you for all the support during that video as well and all the comments and uh, some things that actually, you know, allowed us to move forward with this idea. Now, this is the wand that I managed to get from a little puzzle in the game. Where is it? There we go. So I managed to get that wand I'm holding right now from the vault in the second to last floor. There's a 30% chance you get it. It was the first time I ever got it. And I thought, hey, might as well do some cauldron science, right? Right? And I, as you might have seen last video, this, is meant, this wand is meant to change terrain. And it didn't do it in the cauldron. And it wasn't actually doing it anywhere. And because I had shifted Void, because it was a Void day, Void Liquid destroys things. And generally will destroy the cauldron. As well as many other things in the game, if you poured a liquid on it. it just It's a very destructive liquid. The densest liquid in the game as well, so it goes through any material. Now, I made the connection, because it seemed fitting at the time. And I thought I did at least a good preliminary test. The, because I shifted Void Liquid, this wand wasn't changing terrain because I shifted Void Liquid out of the game. And there is no other connection to Void Liquid anywhere else. Like, the cauldron has Void Days. So on certain days, the cauldron, as you're approaching it, will create Void Liquid and destroy the cauldron itself. Now, when this... Uh, wand is being put against terrain again this entire thing as we showed in the video fury forged video it showed this turning into edr now i was wrong however there is a greater philosophy and understanding that i think we can gain from it despite being a failure again i think it was a successful failure and i want to go through the reasons today why that is so Part of the actual reason I failed was not understanding something and failing to attach a mechanic that's actually fairly prevalent throughout the game. In a way, in certain things. Uh, let me just bubble this up. Yeah, I mixed the liquids. So, there's certain reasons why you might misunderstand. Because again, the way it changes terrain, you could argue that it would have been destructive to destroy or listen. Again, like a paint removal. You can see Void Liquid doing that right. But as I am going to travel around... Have I got a good one? No, I'll use this. It's fine. So I need to head somewhere new. Because at all places, this is failing to change terrain. It's still... At, like, everywhere I've been, it's failing to change. So it doesn't have a Void connection to it. I mean, there is still a connection with... Uh, Void liquid in the cauldron, just not to this wand. There are other connections, though, that I'm kind of glad that I made the error I did. I'll go through them in a little while. Have you seen all this void damage? I need to head somewhere new that will allow me to demonstrate how I got this wrong. Because this wand, despite the fact it's not removing terrain right now, you're going to love this one, by the way. Always cast Mario. Oh, yes. I'll tell you what, getting through lava with this is fantastic, by the way. So, I was talking a lot on stream today about the philosophy of the cauldron and how you don't want to obsess over finding an answer because the whole philosophy of the cauldron itself and kind of, in a way, the devs might see the whole alchemical process is that, you know, you can drive yourself crazy trying to find absolute answers. And we have very, very little information apart from connection to alchemy. And a few connections I'll go through that, you know, kind of connect to this wand still in a little while. But you have two states the cauldron can be in. 
it doesn't have an answer and there's nothing at the cauldron or it has an answer right we don't know we don't know if the cauldron can be solved we don't know if there is uh anything going on there or it could literally have an answer two states right so the answer may or not may may or not may or may not be present so isn't it the best to enjoy the journey instead and the game in a way in its hidden writings can kind of be very suggestive towards that i think that's actually part of the kind of philosophy of the game you're meant to eventually draw out of it again if you read the there's some hidden writings that we think is kind of a fourth wall break that kind of just mocks you for trying so hard to find answers to things and uh Again, I, l I really head into this game with the idea of only trying to enjoy the journey, enjoy the process. And I really, really try and live up to that. Because I actually have said a lot that I don't care if the cauldron has an answer or not. I love talking about the game. I love talking about the theory. So, can we do it here? Or have I already been? I don't think I've already been here. I'm not sure I can change anything around here, though. Yeah, we shall see. No, I don't have unlimited HP. Yeah, we'll find out. But this wand is also good at, you know, taking out the enemy. I'm not sure I can change anything at the uh, altar down here, but we'll just keep on going down. <laughs> there we go. Can I change anything here? Yeah, there you go. So the wand does work. So I've come somewhere new, right? And we can now have the wand function as it's meant to. There's a very good reason why this has happened. And it goes into not a, f a mechanic in the game, right? Which you could argue is a bug, but it might actually work its way into some cauldron ideas. That we used this wand at the cauldron and it didn't work. There's a solid reason. We went to the cauldron. We went away. We got this wand, but then we came back to the cauldron. So anywhere you didn't go to, you can change. The first visit you make to a place, you can change. Oh, I need to get rid of this. The first time is fine, but if you go away and come back, these guys, man, I have rage in my heart for the Hisi, man. But now I can clean it. Yeah, clean. And it's turned into brickwork. Ooh, that's a connection. Like, the gods use brickwork for their holy mountains. Maybe this was a construct of the gods. <laughs> Who knows? But again, it speaks to the one-shot mentality that the cauldron might have. Where you visit a place, you have to do it then. You can't then go away and come back and expect to use this wand to clean things, right? It has to be the first time you visit. And that's what I got wrong. I checked in other places with this wand. The only problem with that is I didn't check any new places with the wand. And that's why I got misunderstood. However, the connections with the wand, or at least the vault puzzle and the cauldron, are still there, and I'll show you in a little while. There are a few places in the game where the kind of one-shot mentality comes into it. If you know the balance beam, kind of not directly above my head, but in the desert, you get those uh, scales. And if you fill in the suns at the moon, you will get some gems there. Those gems, if you kick them to the altar at the mountain, you can create a sun instantaneously. If you kick both of them there, you can create both suns, creating a supernova. It has to be well-timed, though. The problem I've had with them in the past is I've gone up to them, traveled past them, seen them, gone somewhere else, then come back and kick them to the altar, and they haven't worked. Now, it could be a bug, but I'm starting to think it might be a mechanic because you do see it echo throughout the game. That's just one example. There's a few out there. Like a one-shot mentality. You've got to do it on your first visit. Now, you probably see why 
or how and I'm using that to connect it to the cauldron. You've got to visit the cauldron once. You've got to do something there. You can't just travel away, go collect things once you've visited the cauldron and then come back. Oh, the other idea for myself that I'm working on myself, because I want to centralize my own attempt at the cauldron, is that I'm starting a new run. You can't undo things in the game. The world you function in, in Noita, you could argue is out of balance, and there's gods that are trying to manipulate you to do various things. And I want to act on my own in a new save, make my own decisions regarding what I know, to try and affect the world, bring it into more balance, and then hopefully Cauldron might be a possible thing we can do. Again, I don't care if I ever solve the cauldron. I love the journey. And, uh, yeah, it's a wonderful thing. I really like it. But I did mention there is a connection still to the vault puzzle. This little thing. Right here. To the cauldron, right? I'm not sure if you can see it. <laughs> you have to be a bit abstract here in your mind and give me a little bit of wiggle room. So, we're talking about... Not ah, No, I've used that already. The squared circle. Alchemic symbol, 17th century, illustrating the interplay of four elements of matter symbolizing the Philosopher's Stone. A very, very prominent symbol in alchemy. Also used in the game for the end of everything. A spell that is locked away by the technological faction in the game. There is an egg of technology where you find this and you have to do various puzzles. We think the Hisi lock this away because they have not power over magic. There's three factions in the game. Magic, technology, and nature. We think there's a bit of a hierarchy. The nature's at the bottom, magic in the middle, and then you've got technology, which is coming into prominence. We think he see locked the end of everything away or they created the technology to hide the most destructive magic in the egg of technology we can get that so again very powerful shouldn't um heavily advise not to cast this spell probably however we've got the symbol for the end of everything right here so We'll start with the cauldron, right? And this is the most kind of interesting one. And one of the pretty much only clues that you'll ever get about the cauldron, most likely. If we start with a circle, the cauldron itself, right? And again, give me a bit of wiggle room. I'm not going to, you know, be using... So the block in the background, it's a rectangle, but, you know, we're going to call it a square. And then you've got these pillars forming a triangle. And you see where we're going? And then you've got the entirety of the outside of the cave that you can see there forming the circle. Again, give me a bit of wiggle room here. See what I mean? So the entirety of the cauldron looks like the end of everything spell in terrain format. If you give yourself a bit of room there. Now, this one's even more kind of abstract, but you do get some solid lines. Let me just... Uh... It depends if you see this as a circle right here, and then you've got the square there. You can actually see the outline right there. And then you've got an entire circle in the background as well, but you have a triangle right there. And you can kind of see it, you know? Top notch work there, arts, art, and, like, art and math are my greatest weaknesses. <laughs> You've probably seen in the thumbnails, right? Um, but yeah, I mean, you know what I mean? It's right there, right in front of you. 100% connection, right? <laughs> I mean, this one's bad. <laughs> but... You can definitely see... I'm not... That's an oval, right? <laughs> Though I don't want to use that as a circle. I could do. And then you got the square, right there. And then you got the triangle. So it's known as a squared circle. But that's still... Again, if you give yourself some wiggle room, that's the end of everything. And it's definitely there. It's kind of easy to see it if I don't overlay it with a bunch of stuff. <laughs> you know what I mean? I uh, might, but... Uh, hold on. No, I can't. Hold on, can I do that? Give me a sec. Yeah. 
Yeah, perfect. Fits perfectly. <laughs> fits perfectly, my friends. Look at it. It's bang on. Everything about it fits wonderfully. But you know what I mean. The triangle, the square, and the circles, and... There's enough there. And if you say there's not, I will not, you know, be listening to your skeptic ass, and uh, I will certainly just move on, you know? <laughs> yeah, I've got my own theories. So you can have yours. It's all perfectly acceptable. So this wand isn't connected to void liquid. However, maybe it's trying to tell us something a little bit regarding the kind of one-shot mentality of certain things in the game. Again, the whole idea that you have to visit the cauldron and do something there and move away isn't new. But to have it reinforced by this wand, especially in my own mind, because I never really thought about it too much. I've never minded going away from the cauldron. But maybe you do have to be really disciplined and strict if you want the answers to the greatest puzzle gaming has to offer. Again, you may need to reinforce your thinking. So again, the, the wand's perfectly fine. Maybe you still need to use this wand to mix things, to mix liquids. Look at it go. Look, look at it. Brrr. But again, I, I wanted to do an update video. Um, again, and uh, a journey in trying to understand the cauldron is an actual exercise in humility. Again, if you're looking for the answers, I think you're kind of looking in the wrong direction. What you want to concentrate on is understanding the game more and then applying that to the cauldron and enjoying the journey along the way. Again, I might do a bigger video on discussing the philosophy of Noita and ha not how to approach it. I'm not, gonna, I'm not here to tell anyone how to do anything. I just like a certain way and I like talking about the uh, benefits I get from looking at it that way, right? Like a cult leader. Or, you know, Meta Guru. <laughs> anyway, I appreciate you taking the time to enjoy the kind of part two of this video. Again, I hope even if this didn't uh, work out, I was very enthusiastic when I found it, right? And I was like, oh, I've got to get something out quick, you know? And I did. But the next day, again, thanks to Nims Pyre as well for uh, putting me in the, uh, the right direction to correct myself. But I still think I came away with more in a way than I started, so I'm kind of happy. I don't feel like it's a failure. It's made me question several things, so... Hey, again, if you enjoy talking about this kind of thing... And again, to those who have joined us over at twitch.tv forward slash let's suffer together... Hey! Good to see you. And I hope you had a great experience, you know, over on the old Twitch. Yeah, come and join us for some great interactive entertainment. And uh, hey, I'll catch you there. Yeah, I'll try not uh, next time. I'll um, probably just do the same thing. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> yeah, I'll be off. I'll be having a nap, thinking. You know, I'm still curious about that one man. Hey, the red jewel. Uh, some people have said it's orange. I'm still convinced it's red. That red jewel on it. You know how when you do the 34 4 bending, you get a little red pixel? Hey, this has a red little jewel on it. A big one, actually. It's got two. Uh, it's got two. If you look at it, one at the bottom, one in the center. Mm. Again, the amount of intricacies and the detail in this game. And it's immense mystery is insane. Just try don't go crazy when you think about it. That's rule number one, you know? Just try and keep your head on your shoulders. And uh, do the best you can, you know? Hey, there's an amazing community of people who enjoy talking about this stuff too, so get involved, you know? I hope the one thing that happened was that people can, even with this second video, maintain enthusiasm for thinking about the game in general. I mean, if someone watches my video and goes, plays, not you, you know, either for the first time in ages or picks up the game or reinvigorates them in whatever way. I've done my job, right? I don't mind failing in that um, kind of theory because of that. So, you know, no shame. Just, uh, I, you know, it was a little bit, ah, uh, I thought I found something cool. But you've got to look at the bright side. You've got to look at the silver lining. Because, again, I feel a bit reinvigorated despite the failure, so... Hey. Positives. 
and whatnot, you know? Yeah, you get rid of that. Hey, stuck in the roof. Beautiful. Anyway, thank you to everyone who supports the channel in any way, shape, or form. You can always subscribe, ring that bell down below. Again, like the names you saw at the start of the video. People who click the join button. Once a month contributions and uh, helps keep us doing what we're doing. To be fair, it's where I get most of my revenue, to be honest, these days. Again, ad revenue for YouTube ain't what it used to be. I think it's... I think, uh, you know, as inflation goes up, uh, YouTube ad revenue goes down. So, again, if you could support the channel and you are able to, and, you know, it's always highly appreciated if you consider to do so. You can join us over on Twitch. Hey, if you have an Amazon Prime, you can link your Twitch Prime to... Now, you can link your Amazon to Twitch and get a free Twitch Prime to help support the channel over on Twitch as well. And various other things. Go click buttons. In the description, there's a bunch of stuff as well, like Discord. Um, hey, coffee. Coffee link for, again, one-off contributions and stuff like that. I'm going. I'll see you later. Take it easy, guys. Peace. Yeah, but a big thank you to the pounders out there. The other selection of people who click the join button down below and contribute to the channel financially. Again, much love, my friends. Thank you so much for doing so. I'll catch up with you in the next video. I'll see you soon. Much love, my friends. Peace.